the seventh word that uh, Jesus uh, said on the cross, uh, can we see it in Luke 23, 46? It says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. When I was reading this, the first word, Father, I remember the father that uh, <coughs> I had in my graduation day. I studied uh, in uh, a Christian institution, Lyra uh, College in Vancouver. And uh, when we say father, we usually refer to God the Father or our uh, parents, dad, who gave us birth. But this father is the father in the church. Uh, he was also our lecturer. He was supposed to teach English, but he was always interested in uh, teaching about culture, history, politics, and all these things. I remember one incident uh, when we had election. He said, I'm not a politician, but I always believe in two parties. A drinking party on Friday, and a dance party on Saturday. <laughs> and, uh, he used to take us on uh, tours. I remember him taking us to, in the name of tours, he used to take us to temples. He took us to temple in Amravati, and he took us to the world famous uh, Tirupati temple. And uh, he used to go inside and uh, do bhajans and he used to dance and uh, he used to do pujas and all these things. Um, and there was this uh, brother, uh, brother is someone who is uh, a step below the father. Uh, he is in the training. So I and this brother, we used to sit uh, outside and I asked him, why are you doing all these things? He's supposed to, he's a father and he's a Christian and he's not supposed to do all these things. And he, uh, the brother said, that he is trying to gain the confidence of the students. He is trying to gain the trust of the students who are not Christian, so that they will listen to him in the class. Now here we see a father trying to gain the trust of students. But unlike this father, God our Father, can be trusted. Jesus trusted his father. Jesus completed the task that was assigned to him. He paid the penalty for our sin. And father accepts the sin offering that Jesus made. And that can be seen by the resurrection of Christ. After Jesus died, he had a fellowship with God. And he wants us all to have the fellowship with God. By dying on the cross, Jesus became a bridge between humans, us humans, the sinners, and between the Holy God. He paid the ransom for our consequences. Fellowship with God is a requirement for all human beings. And let's examine ourselves. Are we having that fellowship with God? Are we ready to have that fellowship with God? And moving on, in Luke 23, 46, again it says, Into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now let's understand that Jesus' life was not taken away from him forcibly. The Roman soldiers might have crucified him. They might have tortured him, beaten him. But they had no power on his life. In John 10, 18, it says, But I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. So the only person that had power 
over in his life, he is himself. He came from the Father, and he has to go back from the Father. He has to leave the life that he had on this earth. He had to die physically. And that is why he consciously, willingly, on his own, gave up his life. And when he gave up his life, look at the confidence that he had in the Father. He was committed to remain in submission of God, the Father, until his last breath. He found security in his hands. And he released his life when he released his life into the hands of the Father, he believed that, he trusted that, the Father would rise him again on the third day. What it teaches us is that we too can have the same trust that Jesus had. We too can have the same belief, the same faith in Father, that he would rise us again, even though we are all sinners. We could have an eternal life when he returns. Now Jesus believed in the Father. And we should believe him too because of the promise that we see in John 5.47. John 5.47 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Isn't that good enough for us to understand that? For us to have eternal life, we should believe in him. Now when we say believe or faith, in Bible it means to have total trust in God. Believing in Jesus is trusting in Jesus. People in this world trust in various things for their salvation. You know, people go on pilgrimage, they give offerings. As Christians, a lot of us believe that baptism gives us salvation. No. And there is a new trend. People think that serving the country or taking care of the family or just being good might bring us salvation. But no, there are two things, important lessons that we can learn from the last words of Christ. We have believers and we have non-believers in this crowd. Jesus committing himself into the hands of the Father tells the, us believers to commit our lives completely fully into his hands, trust in him completely. We are all humans, you know, we backslide. We may go grow cold, but we should come back. We should confess our weaknesses. We all know that God is always ready to accept us back. So remember that. We have to come back to him. And those of you that don't believe in Christ, are you still believing in the worldly things to quench your uh, spiritual thirst? You know, once a man asked Paul, what must I do to be saved? Paul replied, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Look at the words, it is not only you who will be saved when you believe in Christ. It is your whole family. You know, we all know that. Some or most of us were not originally Christians. Our forefathers trusted in God. They believed in God. They gave their lives into the hands of the, into the hands of God. And their prayers is the reason why we also became 
I wouldn't say Christians, but we knew about God at least. Now we should have that same faith. We should come up ourselves into his hands. And doing so, we will pave the way for our next generations, our children, our families, our extended families, everyone to come to the Lord and have eternal life. So are you ready to do that prayer? You just have to say, Lord, I am a sinner. I believe you died for my sins. And I accept your free gift of salvation. You know, the words do not have to be like that, but God looks at your heart. It's the confession that is important. So are we ready to make that confession? Let's commit our lives, our spirits, into the hands of a God who can be trusted.